Hello, everybody. I am Kosta Bhattacharjee, a PhD candidate at NGIT. And my today's talk is titled, Power to the Data Defenders, Human-Centered Disclosure Risk Calibration of Open Data. So let's dive straight into the problem. So open data, even after they are anonymized, are vulnerable to disclosure risk. So if we join a traffic stop and search data set with a police citation, citation and data set based on some common attributes like age, gender, race, location, and date, then we found that this person was first stopped at 2 a.m. and was later cited for the possession of narcotics just five minutes later. So this is an example of identity disclosure while joining open data. So let's see some more examples. So researchers were able to identify 91% of all the taxes running in NYC using the NYC taxi open data and another external data set. In another example, researchers were able to re-identify the patients from the data set, this data set made available by the Australian government's Department of Health. So in order to summarize our contribution, so first, we conducted a red team ex exercise and reported some of the disclosure ex examples that we found. And then we tried to understand the different possible attack scenarios into the open data ecosystem. And then we created a visual IIT tool so that a data defender can further analyze this open data set for search examples. So let's see some more examples that we've observed during our red team exercise. So first, we tried to found, find whether there are any vulnerable entry points into the open data ecosystem. So we found that this data set from the San Mateo Data Hub portal has only one record for this individual with these attributes like age, 28 year old, female, Hawaiian, and all. So now, if this is joined with another individual record level data set, then an attacker can leak sensitive information about this individual. Then we thought, can this open data sets be really joined using uh, some attributes? So in the next example, when we join these two data sets from the Fort Lauderdale Police Open Data Portal, we found that two individuals, age 16 and age 20, mentioned separately in these data sets, were involved in the same incident of Lars Seni on this date and at this location. In another example, we found that the presence of direct identifier like case ID helped us to join these two data sets on the same open data portal. And we found that a 26-year-old black male who was arrested for larceny on this date at this location was also cited for disobeying stop sign and driving while the driving license was suspended, just three miles away. So next thought that can this data sets be joined even if there are no such direct identifiers? So hence, we try to join these data sets based on some quasi identifiers. Like this example, when these two data sets from the Albany Police Open Data Portal were joined based on like age, sales, neighborhood, and date, we found that a 22-year-old male who was stopped for field interview at 1.45 a.m. on this date, who received a citation at the same location just three minutes later, so this is an example of identity disclosure while joining open data sets based on some quasi-identifiers. Now, now I will describe the workflow PV, which we developed after finding such examples and which the data defenders can use, to emulate our attack strategies and find more such examples. So here we take the open data sets and try to create joinable groups of data sets. From each group, we then try to compare the joinability risk of each possible pairwise combination, and then finally try to identify the cases of disclosure at record level. So now, can visual analytic intervention help improve this workflow? So first, 
we try to visualize the risky cluster signatures. So for example, if there is a joinable group which has maybe two such quasi-identifiers, another one does not have any quasi-identifier, then this cluster or this group is ranked higher so that the data defender can select this one and use it for further analysis. But even if a group of around 10 addresses would have 45 possible pairwise combinations, like 10 combinations C2, but it is very difficult to analyze each of them. That's why we try to rank this combination based on their risk so that a data defender can select the high risk pair and further analyze them for disclosure. Now let's walk you through an example which we found during a case study with a, a domain expert. So here we have a cluster of seven devices in which all of them have the gender and race attribute. And here is another cluster of 74 devices, but it, none of them have age, gender, or race attributes. So this cluster is ranked higher. So if, some, if when the user selects this, data, this cluster, then we show all the possible pairwise combination of datasets like this. So this is one pair of datasets, this, the police report in 2016 and the police report in 2015. And these are the common attributes between them. They are sorted based on the entropy. And these are the risk score for, this is the risk score for this pair of datasets. Now, when we join this pair based on certain attributes, we found that there are 14 common records between those pairs, within those pair of data sets. So these are shown by this uh, modified parallel set visualization, where each bar is uh, an attribute, and each and, and then we show the category, each category in this different this in this, in this distribution. Sorry. So now, PV also offers some attribute suggestions. And when we selected the disposition attribute, like whether a police incident is closed or open, we found that there is only one incident, which is, which, so there was only one incident, which was open in 2015 and was later closed in 2016. On further inspection, we found that this is an incident of a female runaway juvenile which was reported on this date at this location and was later closed through a supplementary report on this date. So this is an example of identity disclosure, despite being the location being partially masked. Now let's see a short demonstration of the interface. The cluster of datasets on the left-hand side, along with the explanation for the formation of these clusters. For example, the datasets in this cluster have the gender and race attributes, but does not have the age attribute. If you select all the datasets from this cluster, preview will load all the possible pairwise combinations of datasets on the right-hand side. These dataset pairs are sorted based on the risk code, and if a data descender selects this dataset pair, then preview automatically selects some of the joining attributes. And if we join this dataset pair based on these attributes, then we can explore the common records through this visualization. Here we can see that there are 162 records for, uh, for individuals of age 45 and race white. But if we enable the vulnerable record switch, we can see that there is only one record from the age 73 to 87 to the race white. On inspecting further details, we can observe that this is a record for a 76-year-old white female who was arrested on this date for larceny at the neighborhood Dewey's and the Petrosen 110. We also have the exact GPS coordinates for this incident. Thus, it becomes easier to pinpoint an individual from this record. We can argue that this is a step towards identity disclosure. Maybe also offers some feature solutions to further explore this record. Now, if you select a different cluster, then all the pair, possible pairwise combinations of dataset from this cluster will be loaded on the right-hand side. Moreover, using this switch, 
you can also explore the vulnerable data set in each cluster. So this is a short demonstration for the PV interface. This is the, yeah. So as a future work, we are trying to explore the geometry risk beyond the pair of data set, then increase the number of data sets which we have in this. And uh, then we are also trying to understand the privacy risks of underrepresented minority communities. And then finally evaluate impact of PV with data custodians and cyber defenders. So that is my presentation for today. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you for the presentation. Uh, I have one question about uh, the risk of joinability. What is that metric that you deploy to measure that well, risk? Okay. So we developed a metric based on uh, the number of common attributes, their entropy, and there are certain other factors. We have also talked that in, in our peer, in one of our, another people. So I can send you the link to that paper in the chat. So one of the questions that I had was um, when you were picking your data sets, where were you specifically picking these from and how did you go about choosing them to decide how you were going to be finding the data that you were identifying and seeing which you were choosing to identify and how are you choosing your metric for identifying populations that were vulnerable? Yes, so like during the red team exercise, which I showed, as I showed some of the example, we found out that the data set with quasi identifiers may be more vulnerable to this disclosure risk. So what we did, we collected data set from around 500 data porters, or 96 to be precise, sorry. And with, and we got around 40,000 data sets from that. And from there, we filtered around more than 5,400 data sets, which have some combination of quasi identifiers. So from that, we had a seed collection of finally, we kept around 426 data sets, which have some combination of, uh, like, we also eliminated, eliminated some of the data sets which are not related to human activity. Like, there were some related to street lights or buildings like that. We eliminated them and finally had a seed collection of 426 data sets. So we also explained this process though in the paper. So we have also have a figure like uh, how we collected this thing and was the final data set like that.